Thank you. Thank you. There was a uh, shift over from a different device to this device. I'm sorry for this uh, yeah. uh, technical issue. But however, while you're discussing about the topic of the light detection, it's, it's very important for us to understand what is light detection all about? And can we, without the help of any kind of tool, okay, would still be able to detect the light? Or do we require the uh, the kits, what is meant to be used for the polygraph, uh, only to be used for detecting the light? So when this is a question to be uh, answered, here is when we are discussing about the history of the uh, light detection. Light detection as a concept did not just arise in the today's generation. This actually existed from very olden days practice where our kings you know, of the ancient times uh, were effectively using this as a concept for adjudication of the issues before them. So when we're discussing about uh, this kind of issues, the oldest known technique for the light detection is the raw rice method. In Chinese, the ancient Chinese uh, kings used to adopt a particular uh, you know, a technique called the ancient technique of the raw rice method. What happens in this uh, raw rice is raw rice method is that when there was an issue before the kings or the, the adjudicators, they used to uh, call the people in front of them and they used to give them a handful of raw rice and make them to put it in their mouth while they're asking the question and while the person is supposed to be answering the particular question, the raw rice is in their mouth. And after some time, when the question is asked, they were asked to split the, the spit, the rice in their mouth. See, when they spit the rice from their mouth, based on the amount of the raw rice coming out of the mouth, the adjudicators were able to confirm that yes, this person is being truthful or the person is being deceptive. So how does this actually work? Can, can a rice which is in the mouth being spit, can detect some, somebody uh, who is being truthful or who is being deceptive? And this is a question. We have to now understand the physiology, how our body reacts, how our body uh, you know, transforms on particular questions and can our body react to something which uh, the mind is thinking. So this is a question which is relevant to be answered right now. When this is a question, yes, we have to understand the body directly reacts to the thoughts of your mind. It's, it's, it's not a theory established by uh, Mr. Paninder, but even if you are aware, or even if you are not aware so far, we have to believe and understand that the mind, whatever we think in the mind has an impact on our body. So if you think good, you are healthy. If you think bad, you are not so very healthy. There are a lot of proverbs based on this. So which means knowingly, unknowingly, we must understand that the mind actually has an impact on our body. When we had to understand this, the process of the light detection about the raw rice method is very simple to be understood. When the question is asked, when the person is supposed to be answering, if the person is not so stressed, the, the person is not trying to deceive or to lie, when he's trying to be truthful, nobody has to worry about speaking about the truth. See, if, if in case you are in a situation where you're supposed to be speaking the truth, you're very calm in answering what the truth is. Whereas if you're trying to mislead someone by giving them some kind of deceptive answer or a lie, you are thinking 100 different possibilities. For, to, to, to back up my statement on this, I may have to bring in another lie. I may have to bring in another lie for that. So what if he asked me this question? What should I prepare for that? So there are hundreds of different you know, the possibilities what you're thinking before even you are, you, are, uh, you are projecting a lie before anyone. So when you're thinking to be uh, lying, the mind is very, very active 
and your mind will be in stress. So because the mind will be in stress and a lot of pressure, the body reacts with unusual pulse rate, unusual breathing rate, unusual body temperature, a lot of things on you know, th this particular aspects could actually be affected. So because in the raw rice method, when the people are talking about uh, uh, spitting the rice and raw rice, we spit, you need a lot of saliva. If you have sufficient quantity of saliva inside, is only then you can spit the complete amount of the rice from your mouth. Otherwise, the raw rice will stick inside your mouth. Lack of saliva is nothing but the body is in high pressure, high stress. Why are you getting stressed when I'm asking you this question? When that becomes a logic, so because of this uh, particular thing is what our ancient people were able to detect the lie effectively. So it doesn't require any kind of further logic. This itself is a logic because it's, it's a very general understanding that when your mind is not so very free, definitely your body reacts to it. So for this reason, the raw rice method was being used. Now, when we're discussing about the ancient technique, but today we cannot go before the court and say to the court uh, to use the raw rice method because court has to have a typical logic or something which can be demonstrated which can be a foolproof procedure for the court to adjudicate a particular uh, situation before the court. So for this, if the question is that, can we use the raw rice method before the court today? And the answer is a definite no. Why? Because the court requires something which is much beyond what the raw rice method is. So for this reason, when we are discussing today, we need to have some kind of typical scientific setup, which is foolproof, which if you do and if I do, the result should have been the same. So everything need to be discussed in today's uh, in a requirement. But when you discuss about uh, the concepts of the lie detection, technically, we have to understand that this technique, what we're using it, is not just to be called as a lie detection, whereas this must be called a PDD. When I say PDD, it is a psychophysiological detection of deception. It, I repeat the same thing. It is psychophysiological detection of deception. When I use this word psychophysiological, this word has to be again explained for the convenience of the audience. Whereas psycho, is nothing but your mind because we keep using this word very frequently. He is a big psycho, which means he is mentally not fit, is what you use it in your layman's word. But you must understand psycho is something to do with your mind. Physiology is about the body. When we say psychophysiological detection of deception, this means the body reacts to your mind. And such changes which occurs in your body, when your mind says something deceptive, that detection of changes in the body is nothing but psychophysiological detection of deception. That means the body reacts to your mind when you're lying. So such capturing, such changes in your body is something which is the primary factor for deciding if you are lying or you are being truthful. So for achieving this particular thing, we have a lot of tools available. So before I uh, discuss about this, let me just do a small experiment on to the, uh, uh, how the, the, the psychology of the people would actually be impacting when we discuss something on this. So are there any concepts, are there any, uh, uh, the factors which actually affects our mind is the lie detection procedure independent of such momentary changes. So suppose I'm sitting here today, I might be stressed because of different reason. I might be uh, pressurized for different reason. 
I might be not very comfortable because of the environmental factors. I might be sitting in extreme cold, extreme you know, uh, heat. So I'm, I might not be very comfortable sitting here, but will this uncomfortness will have any kind of uh, result on a lie detection procedure? People would say, Are, people can ultimately change their body reactions. So when we have all these possibilities to be discussed, so let me first, discuss about the process and the different techniques available for the lie detection tests. When we discuss about lie detection, we have very different procedures uh, participants, out of which body language, eye contact, uh, a voice stress analysis, and we have the next technical session uh, conducted on LVA, that is layered voice analysis and uh, polygraph, narco, brain mapping. So all these techniques invariably get you the results of the light detection. But which of these techniques are foolproof? When you ask me this, everything is a foolproof. But for the purpose of the adjudication, for the purpose of the court, for the purpose of various authorities, while they want to document certain activities, and this procedure of the PDD, irrespective of the procedures what you use, if somebody has to present it as evidence before the court or any kind of adjudication, that requires to have some kind of documentary evidence. So suppose I use eye contact as a, uh, you know, the technique for the detection of the lie. How do I further demonstrate this? For this, I need to have a camera which captures the eye movement, which captures uh, you know, the movement of the eye, the direction in which the eye is moving. So because of which I have to establish a theory that because of this, this is movement of the eye. This is what I consider as a lie. So it requires a theory. It requires something to be demonstrated. It requires to have something to be documented. So in these aspects, not every parameter which is listed in lie detection test can always be demonstrated. This is where we are now using the uh, techniques, which are usually having that particular, uh, uh, the evidentiary value. But when you ask me about the evidentiary value, is it applicable in international forum versus if it is applicable in the courts of India, the understanding could be different based on the different, uh, you know, the legal systems, what we use, in different uh, countries, this is directly proportional to the law of the land. But in the international level of understanding, any kind of lie detection is permissible. And there are a lot of agencies like FBI, CIA, NIA. So these people will keep on conducting the lie detection in the internal reference, in internal purposes. They want to understand if their agents are just the agents or the double agents. Double agents are nothing but the uh, spy which is working against the country. Of if, if you are supposed to be an agent to India, if you are called as a double agent, that means you are compromised to be a uh, officer of the country of India. That means you're working for some other country as a spy, leaking out the information of our country is what the understanding is. So when people want to establish their credibility in every single situation of the internal requirement, people do conduct the lie detection test. It's only when they clear their particular lie detection test is when they are continuing in the service. I believe if you had seen uh, the movies of James Bond or uh, the, uh, especially the movie of uh, uh, Johnny English, there is a particular uh, sequence where the hero in the movie, who is an agent, would actually uh, uh, have to undergo a test on the polygraph level. So they are trained to uh, you know, uh, cheat the polygraph to a certain extent is what the projection given. And to a certain extent, the, uh, they cannot cheat. The polygraph is another sequence which can also be projected. But when the question is about, can anybody cheat a lie detection test? probably we will find this answer in the ongoing discussion. So participants, I would like to 
share my screen at this time. When we are discussing about this, it's very important to understand the concept of light detection. Is it a skill or is it a science? Because for any report to be used, any uh, kind of document to be used by the adjudicating authority, that requires a scientific value because skill is a topic of arts. Science is something which can be demonstrated, which can be redone, which will have some kind of value. And if, if other person follows the same principle, what I followed, the other person should also get the same result of what I got. That is science. H2O is equal to water. It doesn't have a, a different uh, chemical formula in India, Europe, you know, in any other country. H2O across the world is H2O only. That's science. But for arts, that is a skill. So the skill for an artist, okay, if there is a, uh, you know, a painting artist, the kind of painting he does once, he can never produce it once again. Irrespective of his conscious efforts or what are the efforts? A, a person who sings a song, he cannot sing the same song the same way once again. Okay, there would be some variations. Okay, he might add something when he sings the next time. He might delete something when he sings the next time. So that kind of changes, that kind of uh, variation would always be there in the skill. But when we discuss about the polygraph test or the light detection test, the polygraph is one uh, uh, particular aspect of the lie detection. That is not the only tool that is used for the lie detection, but polygraph has been used up to, uh, by, by several years by now, and various forensic laboratories are equipped with the polygraph procedure of the test. Because why I am discussing this? In India, there is a bar to use the brain mapping and narco analysis. In spite of these two techniques being highly reliable or highly accurate, in India, we are not using this as a tool for detecting the lie. And this famous judgment, okay, this, the, we, we should understand the legal procedures while we are using the tools. So one of the famous judgment, which is referred as uh, Selvi versus the state of Karnataka. This is a very famous judgment in India why we are not using the polygraph as evidence or the results of brain mapping or narco as evidence. This particular uh, rule of the law, rule of the court says in India, every individual citizen is given certain fundamental rights. And these fundamental rights are inherent. From the time you are born, you have certain rights as a human being. While, while countries like India and most of the countries across the world, they also discuss the rights about the animals and environment. So people uh, have to understand what is the rights available for human beings. We have got a lot of rights in every country and every country which is the member of the Geneva Convention of the International Human Rights, they follow the same set of human rights, which includes the, uh, the provision no one can be compelled to be the witness of their own cause. Which means in the polygraph or in the light detection procedure, whatever the statements you have given, that statement would be held against you. Because when you say something, yes, uh, did you kill this person? I say, no. My statement is held against me with the result that I am lying in this particular question. So for this reason, there is a bar to use these techniques because it violates the fundamental rights of a citizen in India. But as a tool, it is always good. But to use against the principles of the constitutional provisions of human rights, only then we are not able to use this as a evidence in India. But as, as a rule of the uh, judgment in this particular case, the Supreme Court has clearly held that brain mapping and narco tests cannot be done. That is, that is totally barred. But polygraph tests can be conducted 
with certain guidelines given by the National Human Rights Commission in India. So this specific topic is specific to Indian context, but in the international context, uh, because most of the countries also use the international human rights, I believe this list of uh, the Human Rights Commission's uh, guidelines is not in any way contradictory to the international practice. So which means a person who is to be tested should have uh, his legal counsels, the counsel being present with him. So he must be uh, briefed about the particular situation. So he must, if, if the subject is a lady, another lady must be present in the uh, 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 testing conditions. So all these guidelines has been given in the human rights uh, guideline. Because of this, in India, to use the polygraph, there is a kind of limitation. But the polygraph results does not have a evidentiary value in India. It can be a tool to be used for the investigation purpose. It can be a very good investigation tool, but it doesn't have an evidentiary value, which means the limitation of this particular uh, tool is that this, this tool is called lie detection, but not truth detection. What it's, it's, it's a negative tool, actually. When we say negative tool, this can effectively identify the lie, but this tool cannot effectively identify the truth. And for some audience here, the statement would be confusing. What do we mean by this? Which means it is the examiner who has a role to play, which is a critical role to play here, because the tools only give us some kind of value, some kind of graph, some kind of score. Using this score, it is the examiner who would interpret this score, just like the doctors would say, go and get a CT scan done. So people will go to the hospital, they get a CT scan. So how does the CT scan look? Only the graphs. And that is a doctor who interprets this CT scan. Okay, because of this graph, I would understand that you might have some kind of brain tumor or has some issue with your in any part of the body. That's how the doctors would, would interpret. But does the graph say this person has a heart problem, this, uh, this person has a, a brain problem? No. So for this reason, the tools would only give you some kind of graph, some kind of value, some kind of score that would be interpreted by the examiner. So for this extent, we are discussing about the science versus the skill. The tools, the techniques, whatever we use is all science. But the scientific value is sometimes compromised by a untrained examiner or an amateur examiner. Because when people talk about, I can cheat the polygraph test. There are cases where people have reportedly, reportedly cheated the polygraph test. I only question the competency of the examiner, but I don't question the credibility of the uh, process of the polygraph test. So this is the understanding of what a skill, what a science is all about. This tool or the technique, what we're using is a typical science. This is not, and if, if this is not a science, court would not have said this could be used. But remember, why this tool can be used for the investigation purpose? Suppose we are sitting in for a polygraph test. The subject I'm interrogating uh, or I'm conducting a polygraph test. And I ask the person, have you hidden the tool which you used for uh, murder at your home? And the subject says, no. I could see the score indicating a lie. I would suggest the investigating officer, so this tool could have been hidden in his home. The police goes there, they recover the tool, and that recovery procedure is a very good evidence. The subject to the uh, result of the polygraph, any further investigation what they do, any further evidence they capture, that's a very good evidence. But only the report of the polygraph which says this person lied to the test, uh, lied to the question, uh, did, you, uh, hide, did you hide the tool uh, which you committed the murder at your home? He answered uh, in, uh, in, in negative and the result is lie. Only my report does not have a evidentiary value. The court cannot convict a person because of a polygraph report which says this person is lying to my question. That is, that is not a piece of 
evidence which can convict the particular accused. Further to this, if any such investigation happens, any further uh, uh, you know, materials are seized, if that evidence is relevant to the question before the court, that is a good evidence. And for this reason, the polygraph results are not a good piece of evidence before the court in India. But technically, it is a good tool for the purpose of investigation is what we have to understand. Now, the, when we discuss about the PTD, that is conducting any kind of lie detection test, it is a psychological game. When I say psychological game, it is definitely a game because when I say technically a game, it is the competency of the examiner, which he will actually align. Uh, he will prepare himself, he will give that kind of setup to the subject to get the desired output of the result. When it's a desired output, technically, the desired output would be the reality of the whole test. This is, this is no way which only says the uh, examiner will only have to conclude the result being a lie or result being a truth. This is not the obligation of an examiner. But to find the truth in the given situation is the uh, uh, responsibility on the examiner for this. Because I said it's a psychological game, we need to give some kind of comfort to the subject. There's all possibility that the subject who comes in to the a polygraph uh, requirement would confess or would share a lot of information which he never have shared so far with anyone. Because when the uh, police took him, he's in the police custody or he might be in jail and he might not have that comfort to share anything with anyone unless otherwise you are providing the comfort. So the providing the comfort becomes the first requirement in the procedure of conducting any kind of lie detection test. And this subject should have the confidence in the process. The polygraph examiner or the PDD expert cannot project himself to be a machinery of the state or he cannot project an uh, uh, impression that I'm only going to support the police. So he must be a neutral person so that the subject will have confidence in the process. If the subject does not have a confidence in the process, that would start you know, uh, a stress to a certain extent, which might adversely affect the whole process of the examination. So making him or the subject to be aligned to the system of your choice, when I say this, I, I would conduct a particular test uh, you know, by taking the help of any participant here. When I do this, people would understand what do I mean by framing? So I, I'll demonstrate this for you very soon. So when we discuss about the, uh, the concepts, so there are a few things which we already have discussed, but I would like to bring it on the screen that these are few known techniques of the lie detection. That is brain mapping, narco polygraph or voice polygraph, eye contact, micro expressions, body language. So these are few known techniques for the purpose of lie detection. And when we do, when we discuss about this, is it a good, what is the scope of this? When we have to answer this, yes, it is a definitely a very good tool used by several investigations across the globe. It is not just, we are discussing about Indian authorities or some uh, specific country authorities. It is used by several investigation agencies across the globe. It's a scientific tool having evidentiary value. That is why we use it for the purpose of investigation. And this scientific tool having evidentiary value in India might have certain conditions apply. But in general, that's definitely a tool which has some amount of evidentiary significance. This can effectively detect the lie and deception. So this has an extra feather to an investigator because when the investigator gets a tool of the lie detection, his investigation becomes much more faster, much more reliable, and he might not trouble hundreds of innocent people. Or even if he gets an innocent person to be uh, you know, connected to a polygraph test, the polygraph test would say, this person is very innocent, he might not be troubled again. So for all the practical reasons, this is definitely a extra feather in the cap of the investigator. One of the very good advantage in the polygraph or the lie detection test is that 
several of the past crimes can also be detected. But when asked a question, okay, have you ever done uh, uh, any other crime like this in the past? He says, no, but I could see he's lying. That means this person could have been involved, not just in this particular case, which is being investigated, but there could be past cases also, which he is involved. This can be brought out by this particular tool. So it's, it's, it's a tool with a lot of possibilities. All right, next. It is a technique admitted by several courts across the globe. So that is why we use this as a tool. But the limitation is that in India, we have certain process of admissibility in India. I just discussed about the case, which has the rule of the law, that this is not going to be used as evidence. In India is what this uh, uh, line refers to. But otherwise, okay, it can ascertain the lie, but it cannot find the truth. I'll just demonstrate this. Suppose if I ask the, uh, the screen name, SIFS, can you please unmute? The screen name SIFS? Yes, sir. Because the screen is named SIFS. Is your name Ria? Sir, Ruchika No, no, you don't, you don't yes, you yes. You'll only answer my question with yes or no. Okay, sir. Is your name Ria? Yes. Okay. I could see you are lying to me. Okay. Your answer is indicating me that you are lying to me. I would further ask you, is your name Shreya? You again answer something. I will assess your uh, result. I am going to ask you like that hundred different or you know hundred. Uh, thousand different names. For all this, I keep getting your line. So it's a negative approach, which means when I say you have lied to 99 questions and the only possibility is the 100th possibility. Okay, when I, when I eliminate you with the possible 99 names and you kept on saying, I am this, I am that, I am this, I am that. Okay, when I kept on seeing you are lying to me and I don't even have to ask you, what is your actual name? Hundredth possibility could be your name. So when I say this, when we, when we eliminate the negatives and only thing which we get out of a reasonable probability, that is how we detect the truth in this particular approach. It is nothing but the lie detection for the dictionary meaning of the understanding. We cannot detect the truth. I can only say you are lying to me. So it's, it's my inference which I draw because of your lie. This is the only possible truth. That is the inference drawn by the expert. That is why the name is given as lie detection. However, for the purpose of the polygraph test. So I, I did mention that there are cases of people effectively cheating the tests is what they are reported the cases. But how would anyone cheat the polygraph test. If you ask me this, if the uh, answer had to be done, I had to discuss about the process, how we conduct the polygraph test, which I'll do it very soon. And the only limitation of this particular test would be consumption of time. Because I said, I should eliminate 100 different possibilities to find one possibility of the truth. So this becomes a, a, a tedious process of eliminating, eliminating, eliminating. So uh, I, before I find the truth, I should have eliminated 99% of other possibilities. So for this reason, this might be a tedious time consuming process. But when I ask you, uh, when I ask all the participants here, how many of you think lying is very easy? Please raise your hands on the screen. There's an option to raise the hand. How many of you think lying is very, very easy? Raise your hands. Can the host give me that number? Because I'm unable to see that number. Approximately how many people say lying is easy? No one answered this question? No, sir, no one has raised the hand till now. Okay. Uh, one is there. One is there, sir. Okay, if I say it's one is less than 0.5% of this audience then. Yeah. But anyway, way, thank you, Virinder Kumar. But other possibility is that how many of you think Lying is so difficult. Please raise your hands. 
How many of you think lying is so difficult? Raise your hands. Okay. So most of the people, okay. Okay, thank, thank you participants. You can now lower your hands. So when compared to the people who think lying is easy, most of the people here believe lying is so difficult. But when I ask you this question, identifying the lie, is it easy? Raise your hands. How many of you think identifying a lie is very easy? Raise your hands. Okay. How many of you think identifying the lie is very difficult? Raise your hands now. Identifying the lie is very difficult. See, see, see the number of audience who are raising the hands. Thank you, participants. Thank you. Now lower your hands. For people who thought lying is difficult and identification of the lies also difficult. We have the majority on this. Most of the people thought lying is difficult and identification is also difficult. And you have the answer for this. Lying, when people say lying is easy, it is not the person's successful uh, lying. It is a failure of the people who did not detect that lie. Okay. It is a failure of the people who did not detect that particular lie. When we, when we outside in, in general investigations, we call a perfect crime. People would prefer this word, perfect crime. What do you mean by perfect crime? Our jurisprudence says there cannot be a crime without any evidence. A perfect crime is nothing but there is no evidence, isn't it? But can there be a possibility of a perfect crime? The answer is no. And the term perfect crime only indicates the failure of the investigation officer. The competency of the investigation officer is highly questioned whenever we use the term perfect crime because there cannot be a perfect crime. Just like this, when we say people can effectively lie and when people also accept it, that we cannot effectively detect the lie, it is only understanding that we are not detecting the lie. We are at failure right now. All right, for, for different reasons. One is that you trust the person at the particular situation, or you are not trained to read the particular lie. You don't know what are the indicators which could actually be considered to be a lie. But there are a lot of situations, even though you suspect this person is lying, because you feel I cannot confront this person with only my understanding, you tend to believe the other person could be truthful. So the reasons are different. But the only understanding is that, yes, the, the, the lying, when we discuss about the, uh, uh, if it is easy or difficult, the principle says that lying takes more cognitive and emotional efforts against telling the truth. You can be easily telling the truth because that's what happens. When you, when you start confronting a person, at one particular time, the person gives it off. Yes, I did this. Yes, I lied. Why? Because he cannot carry forward the same stress. He cannot carry forward the same emotion uh, that, that, that uh, uh, heights of his preparedness to continue lying, to continue keep, uh, you know, giving the deceptive statements. At one particular point of time, he just gives it off. You would have experienced this in your routine life. But the same thing is the principle behind the lying one or the other stage, the person has to give it up. This happens in most of the police investigation uh, procedures when they actually uh, uh, torture the person, a third degree torture, okay? Because of physical pain, the person gives it up. But even if not, even if not, the, uh, the lying takes more cognitive and emotional efforts than being truthful. That is why it's always recommended, you have to be truthful so that you can have less emotional stress. The any which way you have to face the consequences, that's a different thing. Okay, depending upon the situation, people tend to give it up or continue what they are lying. That's a, that's a different question to discuss. Second thing to understand here is that looking for leakage from the baseline. When I say the leakage, the PDD, initially we discussed about it, psychophysiological. The changes in our body has to be carefully observed is what the term leakage is. Because when you start lying, somewhere or the other, 
okay your your body will react to it suppose i i lied something suddenly i feel like doing this i lied suddenly i feel like doing this you know absurd the children children okay when they say, when, when, when we as a child okay or uh, did you take this chocolate child says no and suddenly you cover up the mouth because the body immediately reacts so you the, the child or the children are the very good examples to understand this particular process when when you ask them a question and they, when they have lied suddenly they usually tend to cover their mouth or or suddenly they try to turn around because the body reacts to that but for people who are grown up they consciously control their body but can you consciously control everything no because subconscious mind is bigger and stronger than compared to the consciousness okay for this we have to understand the mind is something uh, which is classified as conscious mind and subconscious mind and subconscious mind is said to be 90% against the conscious mind being just 10% even if whatever consciously you want to control your mind you can only control 10% of the activity of the mind whereas 90% is being there which you cannot have any kind of control that is why it is called as the subconscious mind so this leakage occurs because of subconsciousness so when i say a lie my face my body reacts to it it's only the challenge what you're trying to observe will makes the difference whether you are considering the statement as truth or statement as false observable elements includes facial expressions body language voice statement when i say voice everybody here would have experienced somebody being on the call hey guy where are you i am at home you feel like i don't think you are at home okay you you tend to guess because you are familiar with that person okay when he is at home how he speaks when he is not at home how he speaks so you are familiar with his uh, you know uh, based line you know what is the based line of his reaction when he is outside how he when he is at work when he is busy somewhere okay suppose you are in the class somebody calls you how would you say hey man i am yeah tell me okay it's okay other person will ask you why are you being so low you say, hey hey i am in the class that means you are not comfortable speaking so that voice okay many times acts as a indicator for for the uh, deception to be observed statement statement analysis is a different topic of discussion because it's the the the, the language what you use the linguistics what you use also indicates the lie what it often said when the person is lying he doesn't often take proper noun he always take a common noun in his explanation so however people who want to do a uh, research in the field of uh, statement analysis this is a very good topic to consider for for the research because statement analysis to detect the lie is a very very uh, you know a topic which has which can go so deep and a lot of research is required in that particular domain when when you ask about the lie detection test we have to have this topic to discuss because while we are sitting here to understand the lie detection test does this why does this violate the moral responsibility of the examiner or does this violate the professional responsibility of the examiner so which of these three responsibilities the examiner would be following or should follow if i ask the same question to everyone here so what would you answer participants how many of you think the examiner should always go with the professional or official responsibility please raise your hands the examiner should always go with the professional or official responsibility raise your hands okay thank you thank you how many of you think the exam should always go by the social responsibility please raise your hands okay thank you how many of you think 
the examiner should go by the moral responsibility. Now, please raise your hands. Okay. We have got, we have got like, uh, we have 6%, 4% and 2% kind of a, a, a approach. Thank you, participants. Thank you. You can now lower your hands. It's, it's a reality. It's a reality that an expert at one given situation cannot, you know, cannot carry forward all the three responsibilities. It's only by compromising on the two responsibilities, one responsibility can be effectively be adopted. I'll give a small scenario while conducting the lie detection test. There was a situation where the husband, and, and for all those who think the lie detection test is only used in criminal investigations, no. Today, the lie detection test is used for our society, our morality. And when I ask, when I tell you this, it's about the relationships. It's about the culture. Okay? So when, when the question is about infidelity, the spouse suspect and on each other. This is a tool which is answering the queries to a larger extent. And not every such issue would go to the police. They cannot go to the police and say, I suspect my wife, I suspect my husband without any evidence over there. So when the question is about suspiciousness, this is what the tool which is used to get yourself ascertained. So I have a case to discuss. Uh, it is a very uh, significant case to understand the responsibilities uh, what would be the uh, choice of the responsibility? This husband engaged an expert or examiner to conduct a polygraph test on the wife. These people are married for six years. Soon after the marriage, the couple had to locate in US. They are from India. They located in US. So when they went to US, this particular husband used to work for 14 hours a day. Okay, so even though he is working in US, he was not given the benefits of a employee in US because at different countries, they have strict policies for the uh, uh, employees. Okay, but in spite of that, he was as in the work of 14 hours a day. But when I say 14 hours a day, it was not the day which he used to spend in the office, but he was given the night shift. 14 hours in a day, he used to work in the office at the night. Because of this, when he came home in the day hours, he should sleep. At night, he should go to the office and work. So wife has a physical requirement. So because she has some desires, which is attached to the natural age of the person, natural status of the person because she's a wife, okay? She has to be, have, she has to be fulfilled with her sexual desires. So because of the a wrong working culture of the husband, she happened to develop a relationship with a neighbor in the same apartment who happens to be the husband's, uh, husband's friend. So fine, she attached uh, herself to the friend of the husband for two years. And later, when they came back to India, now the husband somehow got a sense that she was in relationship with the friend of his. He now want to conduct a polygraph on the wife. So in the procedure of the polygraph test or the lie detection test, we have a stage of the examination called as admission, the stage of admission. The wife clearly admitted that yes, she had a relationship with the husband's friend because of the husband's unavailability during the night and she he used to come home in the morning hours and he was stressed out, drained out, and he had no interest about that particular activity. So when this was clear cut said, what is the question which had to be answered in the polygraph test? Nothing, because she has already admitted in the whole thing. But by this time, participants, by this time, this couple has two children, okay? And if the test has to be conducted, if the lady had any relationship while she was at US. Now answer my question. So which of the three responsibilities the examiner should be uh, you know, uh, carrying forward? Suppose if he only goes by the official responsibility or, or the professional responsibility, he would answer 
to a particular question, yes, she had a, a relationship while she was at US. But after coming back to India, she is being very truthful to the husband. Okay, this could have also been tested. So she says, only when I was in US, I had a relationship there. But after I came back to India, I have been very loyal to my husband. So when this had to be dealt with these responsibilities, can any participant say what would be the responsibility to be chosen by the examiner? If you are the examiner, what would you do in this situation? Nobody want to take the responsibility of an examiner? Yes, yes, go ahead, answer the question. Okay, I feel, I feel everybody, I mean, nobody's coming forward to answer this question for, for reasons that nobody is sure as to what of these three had to be chosen. Because if, if the examiner chooses official responsibility, he says the wife had a relationship being at US and husband might end up the relationship and the children are sufferers in this particular situation because the children did not do any kind of crime. Okay, why would they suffer in this? When the, when the couple separate themselves, the children are the sufferers. So if, if in case we had to deal with the social responsibility, the examiner is compromising on the official responsibility. He cannot give the truth to the uh, husband. Moral responsibility, yes. So when, when we discuss about the uh, relationship as a marriage, the wife should not have done that. Yes, correct. But she has a reason why she conducted that. Morality, though it is compromised, that would impact on the social, so, so, social values. The child should not be suffering in that. So out of the three, nothing can actually, uh, you, know, you know, no one responsibility would fulfill the situation before us. So for this reason, so the examiners, to a certain extent, should not get involved in the background of the case. When we discuss about this kind of cases, the examiner would become biased. So it's, it's high time that as an uh, uh, examiner, we should only stick on to our professional responsibility because there will always be a person who has sought some kind of examination from the expert. In case of police investigation cases, the result has to be shared with the police investigator. They will do whatever they should be doing. But in terms of the engagement of a private individual as well, sharing the response, sharing the result is our primary responsibility. Apart from that, when we start discussing about any other background that actually compromises on the professional responsibility. So it is not the examiner's duty to uh, go with social or moral responsibility. It's only the official responsibility which actually supersedes any other responsibility of an examiner. Now, when we're discussing about all these things, participants, uh, uh, how does the polygraph be conducted? How does the examination be conducted? It's, it's very natural that suppose if a person has done something wrong, when the person knows that he's being questioned because of this particular situation, he's prepared for that, okay? So for example, uh, there are many students here, okay? If in case I want to ask the question, did you cheat in any of the exams recently? Especially in the COVID time, most of us had online classes, online exams. So it has become a trend that not studying for the exams, but taking the external support, anybody could have answered the particular examination. I'm not putting a blame on everyone, but I have, I'm only commenting about the trend, which was active during the time of COVID exams. Now, suppose I, if I ask a person, did you cheat in the exam? The person knows that he's going to be asked uh, and answer this particular question, he is prepared for that. Suppose a person is caught in an examination by physical cheating, the cheat was being seized by the invigilator, and they are called to the principal's cabin. The question is that the principal will ask me, why were you cheating, keeping the cheat? My answer is that, sir, it is such a coincidence, and it's very unfortunate incidence, that I was being very honest, I was writing my exam, suddenly I saw some chit flying and came to me 
I just repeat the shit. And at the same time, the invigilator caught me. And this is not my shit. I'm being very truthful. So this is a preparation you're making before you go to the principal's cabin. But you are completely prepared. Principal is going to ask me the chit. This is how the chit came to me. Principal is going to ask me about the uh, content in that particular chit or the handwriting in the chit. I would say it is not my writing. And if principal asked me to write one more sample, I would change my handwriting. A lot of things you are preparing for yourself. But when you go to the principal's cabin, principal will ask you, Are beta, what did you have for the breakfast this morning? Breakfast. Principal asked me what breakfast I had this morning. Uh, it was uh, uh, dosa I had in the morning. And suddenly he asks you, why do you cheat? Cheating or oh, oh, cheating. Okay, what, what was I prepared for is lost. All right, so this is how the preparation versus the actual questions being posed would actually be a benefit for the examiner. For this particular purpose, we have different categories of question which we use it in the purpose of the lie detection test. In the technical understanding, we have something called as irrelevant questions. We have something called as sequence related questions. We also have controlled questions and relevant questions. Participants have also written the answers. Okay, for irrelevant question, yes. So accordingly, what are the questions we're asking? I've also given the value as yes and no. What I mean by this is that irrelevant questions should be such questions to which the answers will always be yes. The irrelevant questions are always such questions to which the answers is always the always the value as yes. Suppose if I ask one of the participants in this session to unmute the microphone, Ria, can you unmute your microphone? Ria Bansa? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. yes. Are we on the online session today? Yes, sir. Answer is yes. Are we in the year 2022? Answer yes. is? Yes. Okay. Uh, are we in the month of August? Answer is? Yes. So irrespective of the issue before me, I'm asking you some question to which the answer is always as yes. This is the irrelevant question, which means irrelevant to the topic of our discussion. Suppose if I'm checking on Ria on if she ever cheated in her exam, and if I'm asking her, are we in the month of August, are we in the year 2022? This is totally irrelevant to those questions. All right, so this is the significance of the questioning category called irrelevant question. Next, sequence related questions. So sequence related is at this point in time is what we try to get that information. What's up, Ria, are you? trying to be lying to any of the questions in my test? Answer is? No. See, when you are the subject, if I'm asking you, are you planning to lie to any of my questions? And your answer is no. I am also going to ask you the question after all the questions which I asked you. Priya, did you intentionally lie to any of the questions in this test? Answer is? Till we know, because when you say yes, that is admission, isn't it? No subject who try to give you this statement as yes. They always want to contest the answer as no only. So in these two segments, the answers are discussed. Uh, irrelevant, the answers is yes. Sequence related answer is no. Now, let me conduct our actual test, the actual pre-test phase on one of the participant here so that we understand how the actual test is going to be conducted. So I would like to choose, I would like to request the host to uh, allow the participant to unmute their microphone so they can answer my question. I would like to take a participant, uh, Lena Pandey. I'm just choosing randomly. So I, have, I personally don't know who Lena Pandey is. So for other participants, I am not biased. <laughs> okay, I'm just taking some random name. Lena Pandey. Yes, sir. Yes. Are you comfortable or would you consent to be the subject for my demonstration to conduct a pre-test phase on you? Yes, sir. Yeah. Taking the consent is very, very important, participants. In the purpose of polygraph test, 
consent is very, very important. So if when I do a test without the subject's consent, that is in violation of their fundamental rights. So for this reason, Lina, thank you very much for uh, volunteering yourself. Lina, I would like to uh, take you through a pre-test phase in which yes. I'm going to ask you some information which you had to go on giving it to me. Lina, can I have your complete name? Sir, my name is Lina Pandey. Participants, I would actually have a format in front of me while I'm conducting the actual test. I'll have a format in front of me where I'm going to uh, not make a note of all these answers what she is going to give it to me. Okay. So, okay, Lina Pandey. Lina Pandey, what is your age? Sir, I am 20 years old. Okay. What is your date of birth? Oh. You don't have to give me the actuals. You can give me some proxy. You know, firstly, you should give me some value. I'm going to make a note of your date of birth. Participants, it's also important that you make a note of the age as well as the date of birth. For some people, they often don't like to increase their age at all. Okay, we have to calculate the age all by ourselves. So what is their age? What is the date of birth? Both of it is important. Lena, yes, I have. Uh, I would like to uh, make it very clear to you the purpose of our discussion today. The purpose is that uh, I'm going to test, I'm going to conduct a test on you for the issue. If in case you have cheated in any of the exams in the near past, this is the issue which we are sitting here is what I'm going to make you understand during the pre-test phase. However, Lina, if you're the actual subject who is being tested, you will actually, you know, answer in that uh, you know, uh, uh, status. Got it. Though, uh, uh, you know, uh, I understand you're not completely prepared to be a subject here. So, so what are the questions I'm going to ask you? Think yourself uh, a person who is being called to test if you cheated in the exam or not. Okay. Now, Lena, on, I have a honesty chart in front of me. I would like you to score any score between 1 and 10 on the uh, question of your honesty, one being the least and 10 being the highest. What is your score, which would like to give it to you for your honesty? Lena? Yes, sir. What would you like to score yourself on a scale of one to 10 for being honest? Nine. Nine of 10. Matlab, you score nine for your honesty, that's good. Lena, in everybody's life, there are set of people who generally trust us, which includes our parents, siblings, close friends, okay? So these are the people who generally trust us, okay? So give me your father's name. Hold on, you did not give me actual name, you can give me proxy name, yes. Lena, your father's name? Okay, I wrote some Pandey. Yes. Mother's name? Some Pandey. Yeah, siblings? A sister and a brother. Yes, the names. Okay, I wrote Mr. X Pandey, Miss Y Pandey. All right. So, Lena, while you have scored yourself nine of 10 for your honesty, and while you gave me the list of people who generally trust you, that makes me understand that you are not such a person who would lie to the person who generally trusts you, and you are not a person who generally cheat the person who generally trusts you. You don't, you are not a person who would steal from the people who generally trust you. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Now, Lena, I have to also take some information about you before I proceed with my further test. So I would like to have some information about the health conditions of you so that I would be convinced that you are fit enough for the purpose of my test. Nina, in the past two years, were you uh, admitted in any hospital for any serious medical treatment? No, sir. No. Are you presently undergoing any kind of medication or regular medication for any issue? No, sir. No. Do you consume alcohol? No, sir. Do you consume any other uh, recreational drugs? No, sir. 
See, dear participants, when I'm asking this question, it's, it's very important that we had to make a note of this. Suppose if Lena's answer was yes, forget about Lena being 20 years, okay, coming from a, a cultural background of Indian family. So if I ask the same question to a, a, you know, a, a student of Western country, most of this answer could have been yes. They consume alcohol, they uh, would take some kind of recreational drugs, the trend culture might be different. Suppose if the answer is yes, yes, I consume alcohol. My further question arises, okay, how frequently do you consume? What is the quantity do you usually consume? When did you recently consume? So did you consume yesterday night? So this morning you have some kind of a hangover effect, which would adversely impact on my test. So I had to be convinced about it, all right? So even the medications, what kind of medications are they taking? So does this medication has any kind of effect on your mind? So that is something to be convinced or be convinced to the examiner. Fine, Lena, after this, all these questions, I have, uh, I have to give you an opportunity. Uh, if in case, I have to ask you this question. You know, why is that you are being suspected that you have cheated in the exam? Why would your friends suspect you only that you would have cheated in the exam? Any reason for that? Lena? Yes, sir. Your friends have suspected that you have cheated in the exam. Okay, uh, do you think there could be any specific reason for that? Sir, maybe unko kuch aisa laga ho mere behavior se ki... Jealousy? Ha. Could be a jealousy, okay. And uh, 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 Lina, do you want to admit anything before I conduct the test? So that the whatever you admit in this particular phase, need not be tested in the testing phase. So is there any situation in the past that you have cheated in the exam in any which way? Sir, when was online? When the examination was conducted online. Okay, yes, so you say you have cheated in the exam in so-and-so exam uh, by using so-and-so method, correct? Yes, sir. And this, I am making a note in my record right now. Okay, as an admission phase. Okay, fine. So apart from this, I don't think you have cheated in the exam. Am I correct, Lena? Yes, sir. Fine, Lena. After all these questions before me, I have few common or very simple questions to be answered by you, and I only want you to answer yes or no to my questions. The questions includes okay, is today, uh, you know. Uh, Wednesday? Answer is? Yes. yes. It's an irrelevant question, dear participants. You have to understand. I'm asking her some irrelevant questions right now. Are we in the year 2022? Answer is? Yes. yes. Are we in the country India? Yes. Or for you at least. Are you in India right now? Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, are we in the month of August? Yes, sir. So I record the answer. Yes, yes, yes. Lena, while these questions are very simple, I have a few uh, questions, which again had to be answered with yes or no only. My question to you is that, have you ever cheated in the exam in the past six months? And the answer is? No. No. Participants, now look at the screen. The relevant question is that which I'm asking her, have you ever cheated in the exam in the past six months? And she gave me the answer as no. Because the questions are to be so framed that the answer given by the subject should always be no for the category of relevant question. All right, fine. Uh, Lena, for the better understanding of cheating, I would like to make you understand, cheating involves anything and everything which is not supposed to be done in an exam. It includes not to carry any kind of external material, not to take any external support to answer the questions, not to take the help of any of your friends sitting in the exam. This is how the cheating could be conducted. Am I right? So you have yes, understood yes. my question and your answer is still no. Am I right? Yes, sir. Okay, my next question to you is that, did you ever help anyone to cheat in the exam? Yes, sir. Helping, helping involves a lot of things. But look, you passing on a cheat to someone 
you you don't have to see the chit but you passing on chit from left side person to right side person is still helping okay or you have seen someone copying and you did not alert the invigilator it is also helping or you have shown your answers to the person sitting next to you is also helping so helping has a lot of uh, you know possibilities so my question to you lena have you ever helped anyone to cheat in the exam yes sir but participants she answered my question as yes for all the relevant questions the answer had to be no because she answered as yes i will go back to the admission phase right now because whatever she is now saying she has done this this amounts to admission i go back to admission okay lena tell me how did you help anyone to cheat in the exam she would say i did that i did this okay i record that in the admission box and now because i had to get the answer as no how do i frame the question to the uh, same issue i'm going to ask lena lena apart from what you admitted is there any which way you have helped anyone to cheat in the exam no no now i got the answer as no again for all the relevant questions the answer had to be no okay so i change my question to get the answer as no now lena my last question to you is that do you know for sure who cheated in the exam hold on for you to be sure there are only three possibilities possibility number 1 you would have seen someone doing that particular cheating that is one possibility to be sure second possibility is that one of your friend came to you and said hey lena look this is how i cheated in the exam so that is being sure of cheating third the only possibility is that you would have cheated in the exam or the only three possibilities okay you can be sure of who cheated in the exam so the answer from lena is that yes what is yes do you know for sure who cheated in the exam yes sir yes again we go back to the admission stage you tell me lena who all cheated in the exam i make a note of one two three four names all right that is admission stage now i come back to the uh, uh, relevant question stage lena apart from what you mentioned do you know for sure who all cheated in the exam no sir no for the relevant question i got the answer as no all right so this is the uh, uh, pre test phase so once i have taken all the responses from lena i'll give her a sheet of paper which i have recorded all the answers to sign the document which means i have briefed her the question she has given me the answers and that is what the responses she would like to give she will also will sign the admission box these are the admissions i don't have to test on what all thing what all she has already admitted because admission is the best evidence for that reason i'll not take up the questions on the admission phase but here lena forget about the test forget about whatever you answered so far have you not lied to your parents for any reason so sometimes but when i asked you you are not such a person who would you know lie to the people who generally trusted you you earlier said as no isn't it yes sir participants i am now referring to the category of the questions which is nothing but the controlled questions controlled questions are those kind of questions to which the examiner would know this subject is going to lie the responses received for the controlled questions are always the known lie because when i initially discussed about the framing the subject framing the subject i said lena you have scored yourself 9 of 10 for your honesty which makes me believe you are not such a person who would lie to the people who generally trust you you are not such a person who steal from the people who generally trust you you are not such a person who cheat the people who generally trust you and to which lena said yes i am not such a person but if i have to reality every one of us would have lied cheated stolen something from the people who generally trusted us isn't it 
so for this reason the controlled questions are those questions which are always a known lie to which the answer must be taken as no only now participants on the screen we have got four different categories of question and in the polygraph test the chronology of the questions would also be the same first we ask irrelevant question where the preparation if any by the subject would be disturbed next we ask the controlled question sequential question is not going to be asked in every uh, you know question being asked sequence related will be asked only twice in the whole chart so control it is irrelevant controlled irrelevant irrelevant controlled relevant irrelevant controlled relevant the three circles the three three cycles is what will make you one chart okay so that's how the questions are uh, important for the purpose of polygraph test control questions are the known lie when the subject is intentionally lying or the examiner is making the subject to lie to this particular question so when you ask me participant this is the baseline we are setting for irrelevant question the answer is yes a truthful answer it has a graph for irrelevant question sorry for, for the controlled question uh, you are getting a graph of a known lie now you get a graph of a relevant question this particular relevant question is it having any resemblance to the controlled question or not so because control question is a known lie if the relevant question graph is closely matching with the controlled questions graph that means this person is lying otherwise this person is not lying will be the understanding here if we are setting a baseline okay we are going to compare the known values of a lie known values of a unknown graph unknown graph is the relevant questions in this test so on the screen dear participants you could see the result of a polygraph test when i say result of polygraph test this is what the computer or the software will give it to you as a graph with such graph it is a examiner who would interpret what is the uh, uh, what is the truth what is the deceptive statements what was received karke it is the examiner who would interpret this particular graph it is not the graph by default which would say lie or truth but there are also few tools in the recent days which would automatically calculate the scores and indicate a deception or a truthfulness but ultimately it is the examiner who would take a call on the values derived from such kind of polygraph tests and when i say polygraph there could be different tools used for the conducting of uh, you know a polygraph test ultimately the principle how it works is nothing but what we discussed so far so participants with this brief introduce introduction to the uh, you know uh, this one uh, the topic i would like to uh, conclude my session that the how the polygraph works and what are all the parameters what we use for the purpose of polygraph with a quick 5 uh, minutes we can i could take question i could answers uh, i could give the answer for the questions arising out of my discussion so far but with the limited extent of one and half hours time of our discussion okay this is what a basic understanding i would wish to give to the participants but this topic is vast and this also uh, could be answered in the upcoming sessions participants i thank you very much for your patience and your involvement the session is now open for the questions thank you very much